I got offered sort of out of the blue a very random job and it was for um, Disney in the publishing department in Copenhagen. Um, so when, when I was 23, I started producing children's books. It sort of gave me an introduction to the business and how it works um, from a very big publisher. One day I got a call from one of my former colleagues at Disney um, and she said, um, I heard that after you left Disney you did a degree in journalism and my husband wants to write a book but he can't write so he needs a ghostwriter. Is that something you do? And I had no idea how to write a book, but I was like, yeah, I can write a book. I wrote about seven or eight as a ghostwriter, and then I wrote another four or five, sort of in my own name. Um, and, and I did a couple of biographies, but a lot of the work I did was um, helping professionals, entrepreneurs, CEOs, tell their stories and share their expertise um, which was an amazing masterclass was because I had to find the good story um, even if the goal of the book was to teach people something um, having to get their attention and keep them sort of focused on what it is that you're going through um, was very good practice Ghostwriting is basically writing for someone else, um, but then it's published in their name. So it's very common among celebrities. Um, sort of basically most of the celebrity biographies, even though it says autobiography and then supposedly it's written by them, it's usually a journalist that's written it. Most procrastination and most writer's block actually comes from trying to write something brilliant. I'm a very big fan of the shitty first draft um, because the first draft is only really about one thing and it's getting the story down on paper because there's, there's a very big difference between the story we have in our head and the one that we can actually get on the page. So after a few years of sort of writing and blogging and, and teaching the craft of writing, I saw a lot of people sort of procrastinate and, and not, um, even though they committed to writing, they weren't doing it, there, there was something holding them back. And that sort of led off into um, talking less about the craft of writing, but a lot more about the limits that we put on ourselves and how we sabotage ourselves. The Divine Writer did grow out of this um, be because what I found was that there was there were so many writing courses and so many books that can help you um, tell you how to write and, and what to do and, and you know set up boundaries. But what do you do when you then you know you've written out your writing schedule, you have your outline, you know what you need to write, and you sit down and you still don't do it. Um, either you go on the internet and you sort of get lost in that, or you just sit there and nothing comes to you. Um, so I started working with some of the methods I've used in other parts of my life. Um, I've always meditated um, and, and sort of using that um, as a way into writing. The Divine Guide to Creating a Daily Writing Practice is a very short little guide. It sort of walks you through the different steps that you need to create a writing practice. Um, and it walks you through the things you have to think about, how you figure out um, what time of day suits you best, what you do when you feel like not writing. Um, all these things that can stop us from, from getting that consistency in our writing. For the first many, many years and the first at least 10 if not more books I wrote, I was traditionally published. Um, all of my um, books I did as a ghostwriter, um, I think except for one, was traditionally published. The ones I wrote myself um, was um, traditionally published. And the reason why I chose to self-publish the things I've written um, in The Divine Writer was that I, I wanted it to be mine. For one thing, um, they would definitely have told me that the books were too short. 
Um, but for me, that was part of the whole point of writing them in the form that I did, was that someone could pick it up and read it in half an hour um, and then get back to writing. And that surely that wouldn't have passed through sort of uh, a traditional publisher. And then it just, it gives you freedom in terms of what you publish. Um, I believe that quality should still be high. So I, I, I spend money on professional editors, professional designers, things like that. If you want people to read your things, putting them out there is not enough. Um, just uploading a book to Amazon is, is not going to sell it. Um, and you have to, if you self-publish, you have to understand that you're no longer just a writer. Um, you are also an editor and a marketing person and, you know, an assistant and an accountant and you, you're basically running a small business. And if you're not prepared to do that, then it's probably not for you. Most recently, I have sort of been writing children's literature and, um, and the joy and the inspiration I got at that age from, from reading books, um, I want to pass that on, yeah. Having a regular writing practice is key to actually getting writing done. And, and to developing as a writer, just because you put in more hours, so you produce more work. Be gentle with yourself. Um, allow yourself to be human um, and allow yourself to fail. Um, I think one of the biggest mistakes I've made in my writing career was that I wouldn't allow myself to fail. And I put so much pressure on myself Taking some of that pressure off and finding that gentleness with yourself um, is key to being able to be consistent and to staying in it for the long run. Um, because if you can't find that, then you will end up burning out and, and it won't be a joy to write. I mean, writing should be fun, if you ask me. <laughs>